Before doing any research at all, I set up an account with WordPress and created a blog to present the audio I work on. This was a very easy process, as WordPress is a blogging site that I've used before, last year, to present all of my AS work. And I know how it works quite well. I like using WordPress as it allowed me to have all of my work organised and in one area that was easily accessible to me when I was in school and at home. However, as you can see, my blog and the work I've presented on it is no longer on this site. It's now on blogger.com. I decided to switch to this site as it was much more compatible with the other digital technologies that I was using. This site is Google run and connected to Google Plus and so anything I do on my YouTube channel, Gmail, Google Docs, Google Forms, Google Slides or any other Google app can be uploaded to my blog with ease. It's just as easy to use as WordPress and can also be accessed from almost anywhere and more easily from my own iPhone as I've downloaded the Blogger app. When it came to research, I use the internet and websites such as SlideShare and Wikipedia to watch existing student presentations. When it came to research, I use the internet and several different websites such as SlideShare and Wikipedia to watch existing student presentations and read articles on music videos before I made any research posts of my own on my blog. Through these mediums, I was able to learn about genre conventions in music videos and the different types of music videos that there were. After this, I used several different technologies to present my research into genre conventions. For example, my posts on pop music video conventions involve screenshots of a PowerPoint which I created using Microsoft PowerPoint. This type of document was very easy to make as I'm used to using Microsoft PowerPoint anyway. However, it's not compatible with Blogger. Hence why I've screenshotted the PowerPoint rather than directly uploading it. This also explains why later on in my research and planning process, I began to use more and more types of technology which were directly compatible with Blogger, such as Google Slides, Prezi, and SlideShare, as it was much less time consuming to upload these to my blog. I also use YouTube to look at existing music videos and the work of other A-level media students, allowing me to see what I was aiming to create. YouTube has the biggest collection of music videos that there is available, and so it made sense to use this when looking at existing videos. Although other streaming sites, such as Vimeo, do exist and would have been a good source of information, they could not provide me with student videos as well as professional videos as YouTube does. I did also look at OCR Weebly's website and the OCR website itself to get an idea of what the different levels of student music video look like and how they might have been marked and the exam specification itself. I also used Google Forms to create a survey to analyse the wants and needs of my target audience during the research stage of my coursework. This was a technology that I had not used before and so it took me some time to understand how it worked. I also used SurveyMonkey to create questionnaires too which I found a little easier to operate as I've used it before. The benefit of using both Google Forms and SurveyMonkey was that they're both free, automatically analyse the results of my surveys and they're easy to send digitally to members of my audience to fill out. To present my results, I use Prezi, which is also free, and I think a more visually interesting way of presenting ideas when compared to other PowerPoint-esque programmes like that. After all this research had been completed, I also made a playlist on Spotify, which I uploaded to my blog. This showed the songs I was potentially considering using for my music video. Using Spotify was a good way to collate them. In collating the research for my Digipack and Magazine advert, I used many of the different softwares mentioned above, and also some others including documents I made and embedded onto my blog using Scroop, and presentations which were made and imported using SlideShare. I used Syncopia too to present some images of existing indie Digipacks in a gallery format making my blog posts more interactive and visually interesting. In the planning stage, use of the iPhone app WhatsApp was certainly prominent. On this, I created a group chat for myself and my actors, where I was able to communicate any information to them regarding filming or their roles in my video directly. This worked particularly well, as all three of us had smartphones on which the app was already installed, and communication using it was instant and made life so much easier for me. Furthermore, WhatsApp seemed to me an ideal method of communication, as I can access it on my MacBook Air and on my iPhone which in themselves have been two pieces of digital technology that have helped me greatly. In particular, my MacBook has been very useful as it is light and easily portable, allowing me to do media work when I'm out and about in places like coffee shops and when I'm on the train. My laptop also came with iMovie already installed on it, and this I used to create my animatic when planning for my video. This was useful as I could construct my animatic when I was both in school and at home. This would not have been the case had I have chosen to use Adobe Premiere Pro which is only installed on the school computers and available for my usage there. I would however say that the drawback to using my Mac is that it does not have Microsoft Office and thus Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint. 
This means that if I wanted to upload documents to Blogger, they had to be first converted from pages or keynote documents to Word and PowerPoint files, and then potentially embedded using script to my blog, or further converted into a Google Docs format or a Google Sites document. Doing this conversion was often time consuming, though I did do it several times in posts such as the one showing my risk assessment. My phone was used almost as much as my laptop within the planning process to take photos of potential locations in which to film, and often to show evidence of my time management. I used my own camera and tripod too to take photographs of the drawings I use in my animatic. My camera is a Panasonic HXWA2 waterproof camera, and although it's not the best quality, it was suitable for me to use for my animatic. When filming this, I struggled a little, as I did not have a big enough tripod to balance this camera on. My mini tripod was insufficient, too small to use. And so I had to balance my camera on a pile of books, which was not ideal, and ran the risk of it falling over and smashing. I would say that because of this, if I had to use this camera again to film another animatic, I would purchase a new and larger tripod to use. I used a website called Poplit, which is a free online tool for creating mind map-esque presentations to present ideas on my music video and explain why I had deviated from some of my original ideas. I never used it before, but it was very easy to use, with the only issue being that I could create a maximum of 10 presentations for free. Adobe Premiere Pro allowed me to edit my video at the same resolution at which it was shot. It was also an editing software which is installed on the School Media Lab's computers, and thus one which could be easily used by me for free. I chose to use Premiere Pro to edit and thus produce my video due to both of these things combined with the fact that I used it last year and I'm comfortable with how it works. Having said this, from using Pro this year I've learned a great deal more about the software. For example, how to cross fade clips, which I've done at both the beginning and end of my video. My experience with Premiere Pro overall was extremely positive. The SD card that I used when filming had 8GB of memory. This was just enough for my project, allowing me to take around 350 videos each time that I went out to film. I do think that the amount of storage that this SD card offers might have been a problem if I decided to film all of my music video at once, and not in two separate parts as I did. If I were to do this again, it would probably be a good idea to purchase an SD card with a greater storage. However, for me, the SD card was a good use of digital technology. Equally, the DSLR camera that I hired out, a Canon 600D, was of very good quality. It had a good battery life and, more importantly, allowed for me to film at a very high resolution, making my work look more professional than if I'd used my own camera or if I'd used a webcam to film. My SD card fitted into this camera and my own camera. So using the Canon meant that I did not have to purchase a separate SD card. During the production process, I used several apps on my iPhone, including the weather app. I used this alongside Google Weather Reports in order to check the weather would be suitable for me to film it each time that I had to arrange a date to film on. I also used other apps which came with my iPhone, such as the Alarm app, to ensure I woke up in time to travel and meet my actors on filming days, or the Maps app, to plan filming routes and the Notes app, which I used to draft filming schedules and to make a note of anything that I would need to film or refilm when I was out and about. Having all of these apps accessible and instant, no matter where I was, allowed me to be organised whenever I was planning to film or actually filming. When it came to creating my Digipack and magazine advert, I played around with both Photoshop and Lucid Press before settling on the use of the latter of these two. I chose to use this as I could access it from school and at home and also because it was slightly easier to use than Photoshop, although ideally I would have used Photoshop if I'd had enough time to learn how to use it effectively. In order to ensure I had enough storage to create the best Digipack and Magazine advert that I could, I signed up to a weeks long trial of the premium account on Lucid Press. The only disadvantage to this was that I had to create both of my ancillary tasks within a week using this site. In the editing process, I used iTunes to import my songs to Adobe Premiere Pro. This proved to be quite difficult as the computer I was editing it on was not an Apple computer. However, with the help of a USB stick, I was able to save the song from my iTunes library to my laptop and then move it onto the computer I was using using the USB. I used the same USB to move photographs from my computer to my laptop when it came to creating my Digipack and Magazine advert, saving them onto a file on my laptop at times when I was not using the stick to move across files. I emailed them to myself on either my school webmail, which uses World Client, my home email, which uses BT Yahoo, or my Gmail account. More and more, I found myself sending things using my Yahoo account, as it's linked to both my laptop and my phone, or my Gmail account. As often, the files I was sending need to be placed immediately onto Google Docs or Google Sites, with which Gmail is linked. 
Many of the clips I used in my first evaluation task were recorded using QuickTime Player, which came free with my Mac laptop. This was a digital technology that I had never used before, and one that I've now learned to use quite easily, saving quite a lot of time and laptop storage space, as I only recorded short videos and took segments of existing music videos rather than downloading them in their entirety. QuickTime also proved to be very helpful in the creation of my second evaluation task. Here I use another program called Movely, which again I'd not used before. Although it was effective in helping me to create a presentation which looked different and interesting, I soon ran out of storage to upload images and examples of my research on my free account to finish the presentation. In an attempt to resolve this problem, I downloaded the half-finished presentation as a video and uploaded it to iMovie, where I hoped to continue with the help of QuickTime rather than redoing what I had already done. QuickTime was essential in helping me to screen record sections of Movely, which I used to create all of the worded elements of this task. I still used Movely to ensure that everything else I added to my iMovie document flowed and looked the same, though I had to do the work in segments due to the aforementioned storage issues. This process was very time consuming and has made me think twice before using Movely again, or at least prompted me to check the limits that come with free accounts on websites. For my audience feedback question, I used the Photo Booth app on my Mac laptop which is also what I'm using for this task too. Photo Booth is incredibly easy to use and helped me to film lots of short videos of members of my target audience quickly and effectively. I would say that as it uses my laptop webcam to film, the quality of the video is nowhere near as professional looking or as clear as things which were shot using the Canon camera. However, this slight issue is certainly outweighed by how easy it is to use, especially when creating green screen effect like this. For a very long time, I had planned to set up a green screen to record this evaluation task, something which had required a lot of practice and precision to ensure the lighting was correct and that I was standing in the correct position whilst filming myself, etc. However, I discovered that Photo Booth has a very similar effect to this, but with a lot less effort, being more practical to use given the fact that this was one of the last evaluation tasks I filmed and edited, and I had little time to learn how to use a green screen before this needed to be submitted.